the machine room of the twin elevators. Let's go to the machine room. We'll begin with the control station, which controls both the elevators. So the control station and the main controllers are enclosed in these cabinets. The central cabinet is in charge at once of both the cabins. Uh, they're painted with two colors. Here is the lower cabin and the red one is in charge of the upper cabin. And here you can see where the cabins are moving. These numbers show us the levels of the cabins. That is the floors of the building. The upper cab has arrived at the 24th floor and the lower one is going up now anyway. The digit after the decimal point shows us the exact location for the precise positioning of the elevators so that the mechanic could locate it easier if the cabin gets stuck. Here we can also see the speed indicators. On the left it shows us that the cabin is going down at the speed of 4 meters a second and on the right the upper cabin is also going down now at the speed of 6 meters a second. So it's either a plus or a minus. Down under are uh, the lift machines and the, the three floors of the machine room. The cabinets here are identical to the ones above and this cabinet is in charge of the engine. The engines are controlled by frequency converters which are very powerful the station only sends a command and this cabinet energizes the machine here is the incoming line equipment the power we take from the city or the building networks is then distributed among the control station and the engines these are the input devices of circuit or circuit breakers of our elevators. Our units produce a lot of heat. That's why they are all equipped with air conditioning units to maintain the temperature required by the manufacturer for regular operation. <coughs> What are these telephones on the cabinets for? These are from communication with the elevator cabins in case of emergency. If the cabs get stuck, you know, uh, the control station gets connected directly to the cabin and it is possible to talk to the passengers there. Hello, is there anyone in the cabin? Thank you. The electronic temperature control is set up so that at temperatures over 40 degrees Celsius operation is forbidden. If the temperature is higher, we'll have to shut them down and they won't be able to operate. And what about the summer? Can the system operate normally then? Yes, the AC system helps maintain normal temperatures. So it's the electronic system itself that gets heated. So. Yes, the control system is equipped with sensors that won't allow to operate the elevators under high temperatures. It is a matter of security as it can suddenly switch on something wrong and so on. So the temperature rises because of the circuitry that thinks and probably because of the friction. No, not due to friction, but the, electronic, the electric engines that are used here produce a lot of heat, especially by slowing down and recuperation and by intensive use like now in the rush hours. The winding can get overheated. Now we are on level 37. It's the engine hall with engines. 
that move our cabins through a system of cable wires. The engine has uh, quite a peculiar design. Its outer part is the rotor. It is moving while the inner part of the engine is static. If you look inside here, you will see that the outer part is rotating. So the rotor is outside and the stator is inside. This is characteristic of this system only, and Tissen Group decided to use just these engines here on this location. Here we can see the large units of the brake system. These are brake solenoids that move the blocks apart and let the engine rotate. So through the help of these blocks, the engine and cabins stop. So it's the engines that produce a lot of heat. They warm up by intensive use. That's why we need a system of fan coil and AC units. These engines are for the lower cabins and the upper cabins are controlled from the other engine room which is below this one. Here it is. In emergencies, it is necessary to evacuate passengers and it can happen so that there is no power and it is impossible to lift or lower the cabins with the help of the engine. In these cases we use this mechanism. This device is quite heavy. It must be installed here. Now it is closed with a lid. And then manually, very slowly, after you release the brakes, you move the cabin to the nearest floor and evacuate the passengers. Also, we can see here the cables that pass through this room from the upper winch and below us is another floor. Now we're standing on the last floor of the engine compartment, four floors down. It's the last floor where the cables are redistributed before they go down into the shaft. Here the cable wires are directed to the cabins with the help of these big tap-off units and pulleys. And also there are the main safety devices, which are overspeed governors that are connected directly to catches. With overspeed or a cable break, this device is engaged and it stops the cabin with a system of cables and catches. The cams of, or wedge assemblers cut into the guardrails <coughs> and the cabin stops until a mechanic comes and lets the passengers out. Below us is the shaft and uh, we can see for ourselves where the cabins are now.
Okay, w one of the cabins started to move and now we can see the roof of the upper cabin. Are cabins like engines painted in different colors? Yes, to make it easy for the mechanics to understand uh, the top beams are painted differently. Red and orange mean the upper cabins, blue and green refer to the bottom ones. Now, from this side we can see the lower cabin, which is going down. It is painted blue.